Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan Emmers, this is Ukraine War News Update. Second part thereof, though, it might come out first due to the internet going down and messing everything up and then YouTube restricted my first video and blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, so who knows? Anyway, military aid video for the 7th of May 2024. Uh, we are going to start with uh, weapons and ammunition for Ukraine should be produced faster and more efficiently, preferably on the territory of Ukraine itself, says EU diplomacy chief Joseph Burrell. Uh, this is a follow on from what I said yesterday with regard to Denmark and Canada giving money to Ukraine to build their own um military equipment munitions whatnot on ukrainian territory and i talked about how this is the next best thing for an individual nation from their point of view if you're looking at economic sorry if you're looking at military aid to ukraine having some kind of economic stimulus angle to it then say denmark giving money to ukraine to build particular weapons inside ukraine is the next best thing from building it in denmark from denmark's point of view because it, it has the added bonus of being a stimulus for Ukraine. It's not just about getting weapons to Ukraine, but it's getting weapons with either benefit to the, to the Danish economy or next best thing to the Ukrainian economy. And then the third best thing is probably EU economy for Denmark's point of view. And the fourth best thing is benefit to someone else's economy outside the EU. So it'll go down like that. So for Canada, the best thing is for, for them to stimulate their own economy, but there might be a, a stage where actually Ukraine more needs something that, that Canada can't provide. So let's get U Ukraine to build it themselves. And that's the second best thing. So it's interesting that Joseph Burrell says that weapons and ammunition for Ukraine should be produced faster and more efficiently but preferably on the territory of Ukraine itself. And of course, it's obvious they need to produce it more efficiently and, and, and more quickly than, than they have been producing it so, so far. Yeah, that goes without saying. Uh, during a visit by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz to Lithuania, Lithuanian Prime Minister Gitanos Nalzada confirmed that Lithuania will contribute to the German IAAD, this is the air defence initiative that the Germans are putting together, that coalition, which aims to strengthen Ukraine's air defence. They plan to support Ukraine with air surveillance radars. Uh, good news there. We have Spain yesterday successfully delivering a new batch of Patriot SAM interceptors to Ukraine. These are not the launchers, these are the missiles themselves. The Spanish Defence Minister Margarita Robles has confirmed the delivery according to El Mundo, but obviously Ukraine really need the launchers, they need the whole systems, that whole battery, uh, but they also really need the interceptors. So uh, the, it is better that they get the interceptors than nothing, uh, but what they wanted were obviously the launchers and the interceptors and Spain were one of the the top uh, possible de uh, locations for the potential SAM acquisitions but they didn't come through unfortunately. It's been a lot of talk about when the F-16 is going to be delivered and who is delivering them at what point. The D Dutch here saying that they will start deliveries in the autumn uh, that is certainly a lot uh, longer than was being hoped for but that could be just the Dutch ones as opposed to say Danish ones I, I believe a, a, a whole bunch of F-16s but is it the Danish ones are already over in possibly Romania so the Netherlands starts says Kiev Independent uh, plans to start delivering its F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine this autumn after Denmark begins that's it transferring its aircraft already in the summer Dutch Defence Minister Kajia Ollongren uh, said during a press briefing in Vilnius so there is that right this is a bit of a long-ish thread but I think it's worth looking into quote in military terms the scalp is a real game changer what's the scalp the scalp is a French version of the British storm shadow They're basically made, made by the same company really um, th that the scalp is what the French have provided I believe the Italians have provided the storm shadow so they had the storm shadow rather than the scalp uh, but nonetheless uh, this is uh, oper quote, Operation Chrysalis, how France is organizing the supply of scalp missiles to Ukraine. So this is RFI, the um, French 
uh, media outlets uh, revealing the French methods for supplying the Ukrainian armed forces with scout cruise missiles without touching its own strategic stock. So let's have a quick look into this. Oh, quick. France has identified several batches of scout PG uh, cruise missiles stored in cocoons in its arsenals. A cocoon is a waterproof package used to protect and preserve equipment with a view to a possible return to service. Two types of stockpile emerged, old missiles that had reached the end of their life but were intact. On the other hand, cocoons containing missiles that, that were no longer used because they've been cannibalized that is a certain number of parts or components have been removed in order to keep others in working order scalps used in the uh, french air force squadrons uh, they must therefore return to the factories where they were assembled in france more precisely in bourges on one of the mbda group industrial sites where these machines were produced in the 2000s the plan is to upgrade the equipment over a three-month period during which each missile will undergo a battery of tests a simplified procedure because France is sure that scouts sent to Ukraine will not be returned to storage but will be launched against Russian targets within weeks. In addition to Chrysalid, uh, um, yeah, uh, which must be completed by the end of the year, the French authorities are looking elsewhere. They are looking for all types of ammunition scouts but also 155mm shells for artillery and surface to air we weapons to defend the Ukrainian skies. There are also export versions of scout PG missiles and again the main idea is to ensure that those that reach the end of their life or that could be sold are used by Ukraine. This idea has been circulating since the beginning of this year. Some customers in the French defence industry have ordered large quantities of the scalps in a slightly different version to that fitted to French squadrons. However, a source close to the manufacturer told RFI that these versions cannot be programmed using French computers. These missiles will therefore have to be adapted to be comp compatible with the mission preparation system provided by the Elysee, by, provided by France. Discretion is required on this sensitive issue, but it's likely that these export missiles, if sold, will undergo some modifications on the assembly lines to make them usable by Ukraine. The scope of these scalps exports is somewhat smaller and some software is different. The first units were delivered to Ukraine in the second half of 2023. In August, uh, Zelensky inaugurated the scalp EG missile by writing glory to Ukraine on the sides of the weapon. Uh, the first shot targeted a Russian command center in Luhansk Oblast, which until then had been out of range of the Ukrainian arsenal, but it was the scalps with a range of 300 kilometers that were the architects of the victory in the Black Sea. Uh, on the 12th of September, a large-scale missile attack destroyed two ships dry docked in the port of Sevastopol, a large landing ship and a kilo-class submarine, the Rostov on Don. On September the 22nd, 2023, a salvo of missiles penetrated Russian air surface-to-air defenses and struck the headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet again at the Sevastopol naval bases, injuring and killing senior officers. On the 4th of November 2023, the Kerch shipyard suffered a massive attack by around 10 missiles, damaging a French, uh, sorry, a Russian warship armed with Canaba cruise missiles. Scalp EG cruise missiles helped to push the Russian fleet back to the easternmost part of the Black Sea, a victory that allowed Ukraine to protect the port of Odessa and secure a naval corridor along its coast, allowing the export of grain. And now that I think about it, our friend Sebastien Locournou sent 40 scalps to MBDA France to be recycled. The TLDR is uh, Russian troops and fleets are being harassed by obsolete French cruise missiles that have been recycled. War ecology. So that's how uh, that is working. Um, we'll move on to a uh, Ukraine is to produce more weapons worth $10 billion if finance. So the gap between Ukrainian companies' production capacities and their funding is $10 billion for 2024, Strategic Ministry, Industry, Industries Minister Alexander Kamishian has said on May the 6th. Now, this again goes back to Canada, Denmark, and now Joseph Perel saying, actually, we need to fund Ukraine's production of their, their stuff. So Commission is saying, look, we can make $10 billion worth of stuff. We've got the people, we've got the resources, we've got the the, the stuff, the, the natural resources, if you like, and components to make this this equipment. We can make $10 billion worth of equipment. But what we're missing are the $10 billion to make that equipment. So if you guys can finance us, we can ramp up possibly quicker, possibly make things more quickly than other nations around the world who, who are thinking about ramping up their own production of, of whatever it may be. So interesting that that then fits together with what, what I was talking about earlier.
Uh, here's a demining vehicle used by the Department of Emergency Services in Ukraine. It's the MV4 donated by Croatia. Croatia intends to deliver 30 to 40 heavier MV10s this year. I mean, that's absolutely phenomenal that, that they're going to get 30 to 40. Brilliant. 30 to 40 of these or bigger versions of these in order to do some demining. And by the looks of it, they don't just demine, they plow the fields. I wonder if they can plant as well. I wonder if you can get like... Yeah, uh, shut up here. So I was just going to go off on one then, talking about farming and mining at the same time. You get the point. Um, right, British Intel uh, provides interesting estimates of Chechen forces fighting and training for Russia in its war in Ukraine. Okay, so here we have the intelligence update saying it's likely that around 9,000 personnel are currently serving in pro-Russian Chechen units in Ukraine. Think about Chechnya and places like that, and I don't wonder if Georgia it would be the same... Mm there are many people in these places that probably don't particularly like Russia, right? Che Chechnya was invaded twice and it was only because the uh, Kadyrov or it was Kadyrov's father changed sides uh, completely and, and essentially, as far as I can work out, followed the money really, that Chechnya buckled to the might of Russia. But there's probably a lot of Chechens who aren't like massively in favour of Russia, but money talks doesn't it and so when you, one of your best chances of social mobility is joining the armed forces and getting a decent consistent income then maybe maybe that's how chechen can keep producing these fighters but then again they'll just be also completely brainwashing their population and now how many how how many years has it been since that uh, that Chechen war or those Chechen wars took place and you're thinking those young kids who have been brainwashed through the system are now coming out as young men and are fighting age and that's how you can get 9,000 personnel to fight for Russia even though there are Ch Chechens who have been essentially overcome by the Russians. Anyway, pro-Russian Chechen forces have been fighting in Ukraine since 2014. Additional Chechen formations were dispatched to Ukraine at the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion in 2022. However, suffering initial heavy losses, Chechen units became largely relegated to conducting near uh, rear area security operations and became derided as TikTok troops for their social media antics. Since the withdrawal of Russia's private military company Wagner from the front lines in May 2023, Chechen units have been pressed back into frontline service. It is likely that Chechen Special Forces units bear the brunt of frontline fighting, whilst the bulk of Chechen uh, forces continue to conduct rear area security operations. Besides providing personnel, Chechnya's other key contribution to Russia's war against Ukraine is in providing training for Russian personnel. The Russian Special Forces University in Gudermes, Chechnya, has provided training for around 42,000 Russian personnel since 2022, according to Chechnya's leadership. However, it's likely personnel only receive up to 10 days training at the uh, university, bringing the effectiveness of the training and institution into doubt. So this is how Russia is able to, um, well, not only train, but also have forces that it does have with the help of places like uh, Chechnya in this case. Uh, and then Ranzan Kadyrov himself has said, this month it's necessary to take the nearest territory, definitely Odessa and Kharkiv, then force Zelensky to sign the necessary papers. So there's an idea of what Russia might be planning. Kadyrov saying that that's what should happen. Watch out so that Hades doesn't uh, take you to the underworld this month, comrade. Um, yeah, so Chechnya could be uh, a, a, I guess, an increasingly vital component for the Russian armed forces, considering the attrition numbers. Russia will want to recruit from other areas other than you know, tax paying um, civic members of society within Russia because they will get upset when their family members or, or you know these if these men from particularly St. Petersburg Moscow but really anywhere in Russia if, the, if they're dying in droves then you can have the Afghanistan effect where mothers and family members start getting upset about this pointless war we have seen that to a degree it, that could continue to grow and so therefore I think Putin's going to be trying to recruit as we've seen from places like Nepal and Cuba etc 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 India uh, but also places from the Caucasus and Eurasia 
uh, Chechnya being one of them, uh, to help them continue to prosecute the war at the rate that they are. Anyway, that's enough from me. Just uh, a slightly shorter one today uh, for the military aid. Thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, speak to you soon. Thank you.